Okay, in our video series of neurology lectures, in this video, we are going to discuss an approach to tremors. We are going to discuss different types of tremors, their presentation, their causes and management of each type of tremor. Tremor is a rhythmic involuntary movement of one or more body parts. Tremor is divided into resting tremor, tremor that is present at rest and action tremor. Action tremor is the one that occurs when the person starts any voluntary movement. Action tremor is further divided into postural tremor and intention tremor. Postural tremor is further divided into three categories, essential tremor, orthostatic tremor and physiologic tremor. We are going to discuss each one of them in detail. We are also going to discuss flapping tremor and functional tremor in this video. Resting tremor is seen in Parkinson's disease. In Parkinson's disease, you will see a pill rolling tremor, a tremor that is present as dressed as if someone is counting money or as if someone is rolling beads, someone is counting beads. A pill rolling tremor is present at rest in Parkinson's disease. Other than that, the Parkinson can have a movement or as if someone is using a screwdriver. A movement like this can be also present in Parkinson's disease. Other than that, if this tremor is present at rest and it improves on action, when the person tries to perform any activity, this, this tremor improves. Another test that you can perform in these patients, if patient presents with a pill rolling tremor or a tremor as if someone is using a screwdriver, what you can do is that you can perform a glabular tap test. Normally, in a normal healthy person, when you tap the glabular and you Initially, the person might blink for some time, but if you keep tapping the glabular, person gets accustomed to it and the person would not blink. That's the normal response. But in patients with Parkinson's disease, when you keep tapping the uh, at glabular, the person would keep blinking the eyes because that person cannot control it. So a Parkinson's disease patient would continuously blink the eyes when you tap the glabular. That is a positive test that shows that that person is having Parkinson's disease. So the treatment of Parkinson's disease is basically there is loss of dopamine in Parkinson's disease that causes all the movement disorders. I have talked about Parkinson's disease in detail in my video on the uh, Parkinson's disease management. You can check out the link in the description below. For now, you can remember that dopamine is deficient in Parkinson's disease. You give dopaminergic agents. Other than that, anticholinergics are also used for the treatment of Parkinson's tremor, the resting tremor that is seen in Parkinson's disease. Now coming to the action tremor, action tremor is divided into postural tremor and intention tremor. Intention tremor is a coarse tremor that is seen in cerebellar lesions of very high yield point. Cerebellar lesions show intention tremor. Intention tremor is a coarse tremor in which you see zigzag movement of the hands and it get worsens when the person reaches out for the target. If you ask the patient to pick, up, pick something up, this patient will have worsening of the tremor when the patient reaches out for the object and as, as closer he gets to the object, the more worsening of the tremor takes place. I'll give you an example. If you place an object like this and you ask the patient to reach out for this object from above and pick it up like this. Basically, a patient with intention tremor, he would be coming for this object and as soon as he starts landing his hand on the uh, key, he will have this tremor. He will be having this tremor and he will overshoot and undershoot and he cannot reach for this object. So that is an intention tremor. The patient will have worsening of the tremor when the patient is closer to the target. The patient is initially fine but the moment he starts landing his hand on the key, the patient will have the tremors. The patient will have worsening of the tremor. That is called as intention tremor. It improves on rest. It worsens as the patient reaches out for an object. Another thing that you can perform in these patients is the finger nose test. In a normal person, normal person can easily touch the nose and it can easily touch the finger. But in the patient with cerebellar tremors, when they are closer to the finger, their tremor will worsen. They won't be able to touch the finger. They will be missing their target. They will be overshooting. They will be undershooting. And when they are closer to the nose, they will be overshooting. They will be touching the cheeks and it will be difficult for them to reach out for the nose. And when they are in the middle, they might be fine. But as they get closer to the finger, they will be missing out the thing. They will be overshooting. That is an intention tremor. It gets worse when they reach out for the target. And it improves on the rest. Patient might be fine on rest. But as soon as he is closer to the uh, target, he overshoots or undershoots because the cerebellum is damaged. 
Now coming to the postural tremor. Postural tremor is divided into essential tremor, orthostatic tremor and physiologic tremor. Coming to essential tremor. Essential tremor is the most common tremor found in people. It has a bimodal distribution. It is found in teens and then it is found in the people in the sixth decade. There is really a positive family history and a mutation and autosomal dominant mutation is involved in having the essential tremor. Therefore, it runs in the families. Essential tremor is most commonly found in the hands. Person would be having essential tremor, a fine tremor like this. And this fine tremor will get worsened when the person is in anxious state. When the person is in stress, this tremor will worsen. And it also worsens when the person takes any stimulant drink like coffee or tea. So the tremor worsens in these conditions and the tremor improves when the person drinks alcohol. So this is the classical presentation, a tremor, a fine tremor that worsens in anxiety and that improves on alcohol, that improves with drinking. That is a classical presentation of essential tremor. It can also be present in head. It has a yes, yes or no, no motion like this. So this type of tremor is a fine tremor, slight movement is there but it can get exaggerated when the patient is under stress, when the patient is feeling that his, his tremor is getting noticed by the people, he might have exaggeration of the tremor and this tremor might be present in the voice. When you ask the patient to pronounce a single vowel like E, you will see that they will have vibration in the sound as well. So that is the essential tremor. Essential tremor is worse with sustained voluntary action. When you ask these patients to uh, stretch their hands like this and keep their hand in place, you will see that these patients will be having tremors like this. It is worst on sustained voluntary motion, stress, anxiety, fatigue and coffee and is a bilateral postural tremor with frequency of 5 to 10 hertz. Diagnosis is clinical. Treatment is usually not needed but if the patient wants the treatment or if, if the tremor is exaggerated then you can go for propanolol. Propanolol is the drug of choice. Primodine is also a very important drug used for the treatment of essential tremor. Propanolol dose is 60 to 80 mg divided in 2 to 4 times daily doses. Depends on the condition of the patient. Whether the patient wants the treatment of essential tremor or not. If the patient is totally fine with it, you do not need to treat it. But if it is interfering with the daily life activity, if the person cannot write things properly or if the person uh, is interested in doing drawings and that thing is disturbing his drawings, in that patient you go for the treatment. Or if, the, it, or if it gets worsens in the social situations, in that case you go for the treatment for the social situation person can take an extra dose of 10 to 20 mg of propanolol primodine dose is 25 mg once daily before going to sleep propanolol is relatively contraindicated if the person is having heart block because it causes bradycardia unstable heart failure in asthmatics beta blockers are contraindicated in type 1 diabetics other alternatives to propanolol include atenolol sutolol or anticonvulsants like gabapentin, topiramate can also be used in the patients with severe essential tremor. Otherwise, most commonly the patients have mild tremor and it does not require any treatment. In drug resistant cases, deep brain stimulation and thalamotomy can be done. Now coming to the orthostatic tremor. Orthostatic tremor is the tremor associated with a certain position. An old person standing for a longer period of time develops trembling in the legs. And then when the patient starts walking, the tremor goes away. And then when he stops and stands there for some period of time, the patient starts developing trembling of the legs. That is called as orthostatic tremor. It improves on walking. It is not present at walking, on motion. But when the patient stands still for some period of time, that person develops trembling sensation in the legs and the patient has a subjective feeling that he is about to fall. That is called as orthostatic tremor. It is more common in females as compared to males. Onset is around 60 years and associated with long periods of standing. When the person is standing, patient will develop tremors, trembling of the leg, subjective feeling of imbalance and falling over. The, the treatment includes clonazepam and gabapentin. Coming to physiologic tremor. Physiologic tremor is not an abnormal thing. Physiologic tremor is a normal thing. Even if you focus on your hand, you will see that there is a mild, very small amount of tremor present in the hand. That is called as physiologic tremor. That does not need any treatment. It is a normal finding. 
Now coming to the flapping tremor also called as hysterexis. In the flapping tremor the most common etiology is organ failure, renal failure, lungs failure, pulmonary failure, heart failure. These things cause flapping tremor, metabolic encephalopathy, alcohol induced Wilson's disease, renal failure, azotemia, respiratory failure, hypercapnia. Basically, what you do is that you ask the patient to stretch their hands like this and stay in this position for a certain period of time. After that, you will see that these patients will develop. They cannot maintain their tone of the hand and they will start having flapping tremor like this. That is called as flapping tremor because these patients cannot maintain this position for a longer period of time and they cannot maintain the tone of the hand that is called as flapping tremor. You ask the patient to stretch their hands like this and maintain the posture of hands like this and you will see that these patients will develop flapping tremor like this. That is called as a flapping tremor seen in the patients with renal failure, pulmonary failure. That is that is that tremor is also said to have a bird flapping appearance or a wing beating appearance as if a bird is flapping their wing or a wing beating appearance irregular high oscillation tremor when the arms are stretched and hands are extended and you have to treat the cause the cause is basically the renal failure the cause is basically co2 retention the cause is basically the heart failure so you treat the cause and the tremor goes away now coming to functional tremor in functional tremor there is no underlying pathology but the person is having a tremor there is no Parkinson's disease, no essential tremor, no cerebellar disease. You, you do not find the cause, you cannot find the cause of the tremor. Basically, the cause of this tremor is psychological. It's a psychological tremor. It does not mean that a patient is faking the tremor. Patient does not even know that he has a psychological problem. And the treatment of this tremor is also psychological. So how do you diagnose a functional tremor? A patient of conversion disorder can have functional tremor. A patient of anxiety can have functional tremor. Factitious disorder. And remember, functional tremor worsens under direct observation. When you are clinically examining the patient, there will be worsening of intensity of the tremor. But when you distract the patient, you will see that there will be change in intensity of the tremor. For example, if the patient is having the tremor, you perform finger nose test on the other hand. When you perform finger nose test from the other hand uh, of the patient, then you will see that the tremor intensity when the patient is performing the finger nose test, the tremor intensity will change. The tremor will either slow down or the tremor will totally stop. Or you totally distract the patient, you start discussing about anything else. What does that patient do? What job does that patient have? Or any other topic. And you will see that from that distraction, you will see that the tremor intensity, tremor quality will change. Or another thing that you can do is that you ask the patient to perform any arithmetic calculation. What you do is that you ask the patient to subtract 7 from 100 and keep subtracting 7 from whatever answer she gets. For example, subtract 7 from 100. If the answer is 93, now subtract another 7. The answer is 86. Subtract another 7. 79. When the patient is performing calculations in the hand, the patient is distracted, you will see that the intensity of the tremor will change. So that is how you diagnose a patient with functional tremor. And there is quick progression to severe symptoms. When you are clinically examining that patient, there, there will be exaggeration of the symptoms. There will be exaggeration of the uh, uh, tremor. And then after some time when the patient is distracted, the patient will have very mild symptoms. So there, there are extreme extremes of severity during the examination. When you are focusing on the tremor, the tremor will be very high. And when the patient is distracted, the tremors are very low intensity inconsistency over time and variable amplitude the type of tremor will change the quality of movement will change sometimes the patient is having a pill rolling tremor sometimes the patient has having tremor like this sometimes the tremor is like this so the quality of the tremor everything is inconsistent basically it's a psychological problem associated with conversion disorder and the treatment is also psychological in these patients but you always rule out the major pathologies this tremor is triggered by physical injury, somatic symptoms like migraine, headache or any other illness, psychological symptoms like stress. Now basically these things are not directly causing the tremor that injury or migraine or any other illness. 
that illness is psychologically affecting the patient and that effect psychological effect of that disease causes worsening of the tremor while there is no underlying pathology of the tremor that is the functional tremor before going into the summary if you like my video please click on the subscribe button we talked about what is tremor the different types of tremor essential tremor and the treatment of essential tremor it uh, in role is the treatment of essential tremor propanolol otherwise no treatment is needed uh, propanolol is relatively contraindicated in these conditions other drugs that can be used in resistant cases deep brain stimulation is done orthostatic tremor seen on standing in old patients flapping tremor in organ failure flapping tremors is like this what is the presentation and you and you treat the cause of flapping tremor functional tremor seen in anxiety and psychological problems variability of symptoms variability of amplitude and it improves on distraction of the patient triggers of functional tremor if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine and neurology lectures the link of those videos is given in the description below thank you very much